Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new, my name is Heather. I'm a homeschooling mom of three kids, elementary, middle slash high school and high school age. We're going into our 13th year of homeschooling, which is crazy to me. It just sounds crazy saying that. Today I'm going to be doing a curriculum choice video for my son who is in eighth grade or he would be in eighth grade if he were in public school. However, he is going to be doing a combo of eighth grade and ninth grade work. And so I will share that with you as we go through everything. What I'm going to do is turn the camera around and do a top down video so that I can share all of the resources that we are using and flip through some of those for you. If you have questions about anything that you see or that I'm talking about, please let me know in the comments or you can always contact me. My contact form is always in the description box. So let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about my middle guy, Jack. He would be in eighth grade if he were in public school, but we're kind of doing a little bit of freshman year work as well. I don't know how it's going to end up. So Emma did a full freshman year before she would have been in high school. I talked about this yesterday if you didn't see my 10th grade um, curriculum choices because she would be in 10th grade if she were in public school, but she's actually doing a junior year level course load. <laughs> so this year, Jack is going to be doing level 100 history, US history through sunlight, which we did for Emma. Um, before she was in high school. They used to have different age ranges for the levels. And even though level 100 was considered a uh, freshman level course because there, there were so many books, <laughs> there's so many books, and the level of work was quite extensive, the age range was lower when we started homeschooling back in 2010, 2011 with Emma. So her her trajectory all, all the time was being on the younger end of the levels. That's just how it worked. Uh, Jack is a little bit more on, on the level with, with his age, just based on when his birthday is. Anyways, it's a lot. So Sunlight Level 100 is what we're going to be doing for Jack. It's US history. They have changed the spine this year. It used to be A History of Us by Joy Hakim, which I love that series. We did eight books when I did history, US history with Emma. It was a lot of reading that level. And then we ended up doing the books eight and nine uh, this past year, again, just as something extra because Jack was doing main studies, Emma was doing constitutional literacy, so there wasn't a sunlight history level and we really missed um, some of the reading. Okay, so we have The Cross and the Switchblade, Out of Left Field, Cameron Townsend, uh, these Christian heroes then and now, my kids really enjoy these books. Although I don't know if we will read this one again. A lot of the history I do as read alouds, even though it is written, as something that the student does on their own and then you get together with the parent and either discuss the questions or the parent goes over the answers that the student has written down. We did read this so I don't know if we will read it again because I did just do it a couple of years ago. Farewell to Manzanar, Moonshiner's Son, The Yanks Are Coming, What is the Panama Canal, Dragon's Gate, The Slopes of War, A Novel of Gettysburg, Sacagawea, and then let's see. We also have, shh, we're right, <laughs> shh, we're writing the Constitution, uh, Traitor, The Case of Benedict Arnold. This is a new book that we haven't done, Colonial America, a captivating guide to the colonial history of the United States and how immigrants of countries such as England, Spain, France, and the Netherlands established colonies. Um, Before Columbus, the Americas of 1491, which we really enjoyed. And then this is the new spine for U.S. History Level 100 for Sunlight. America, The Last Best Hope. This is the one volume edition. Um, I don't know if they have an audiobook version of this. This is quite large. Uh, it's, you know, 800 pages. So, well, this is notes. So maybe it's like 750 pages or so. Uh, so I don't know if I will read this to Jack, if he will read it, if we will partner read it. I need to really go through the notes because I definitely 
enjoyed the Joy Hakeem A History of Us uh, books, there were a lot of them. So there's actually less text now, I think, in this one volume spine. And overall, there are a bunch of books that are no longer in level 100. There, I think level 100 was the largest level when we did it. And I think there are maybe eight or nine books that are no longer part of this level. So that was really interesting to me. So maybe we will be able to easily get through this and maybe Jack and I will easily get through this uh, together. I'm not sure. Again, I said this in my video yesterday, I have not gone through the new books uh, yet. There are a few new books, um, which I already mentioned. This Colonial America, Out of Left Field, I didn't read before, so I need to look at that. And then this America, The Last Best Hope. So I just need to kind of go through all of the notes and see how everything is structured for the reading this year for history uh, to figure out what exactly I'm going to do. But these are the history books for Jack this year. This year, Jack is going to be starting Japanese um, and he's going to be using Japanese from zero. This is a program that I found online. It has a whole set of YouTube videos. I think there are five books. We just got the first book. You get the book off of Amazon and it has free YouTube videos to go through the book. But then there is also a subscription site for a monthly um, subscription to get more classes and actually speak to people and ask your questions and such. We are not doing the subscription yet, but we probably will end up getting that at some point. Um, so this is going to be his foreign language. He's wanted to learn Japanese forever. He's always wanted to work at Nintendo and so wants to be fluent in Japanese. We most likely will also use some Duolingo because pronunciation and reading this <laughs> is going to be a huge challenge for me. I am definitely going to be having to figure this out along with him and that is going to be an interesting experience. So Spanish, I do great with, even French I can do. I took uh, some French, <laughs> my husband took French. Um, I took mainly Spanish in high school and college, but this is a whole nother ball game. But I really liked the layout of this book. I liked the YouTube videos that I've seen and sort of pre-watched. I like that there is a like an additional subscription if you need more help or if you want to ask questions and such. So I am really excited about this. We'll see how it goes. Um, but this is going to be definitely, this is going to be challenging for this year. So when Emma did level 100 for her freshman year history in English, she ended up doing physical science, the apology of physical science with lab as her freshman science class. However, she did not enjoy that, which it's funny. <laughs> She didn't enjoy that, but we still did Apology of Biology, and we also didn't enjoy that. So he does not want to do physical science, the Apology of Physical Science, next year. He instead wants to use these um, Julia Rothman books, which we have, and I had pulled these out because I had planned to do some small units for Lucy this summer. Uh, for we're doing like a science intensive summer for her. We do a lot of gardening, we have chickens, all of that kind of stuff. So I thought it would be fun to use these. Then I was talking to Jack and trying to figure out science. Last year he did uh, some science unlocked boxes from home science tools, which we loved, but he didn't want to do those again. He wanted something a little bit different. And so Instead, I think we're going to try using these Julia Rothman books and see what we can do with these. Now, somebody did comment recently on one of my videos that there are uh, some workbooks that have been created to go with these. I don't believe the workbooks are by Julia Rothman. Um, and unfortunately, that comment disappeared. I don't know where it went, if the if the commenter had uh, deleted it or whatnot. But I have looked online and I did find uh, some workbooks that go with these 
books particularly. And so I thought that it would be fun to maybe get those. I kind of want to look. Um, they have like a digital version as well as a printed version. I might purchase the digital version because I think they're only $10. Um, and it's really just questions and, uh, you know, a little bit more of a deep dive on some things. I don't know if he would enjoy doing that. He's not one really for worksheets and stuff. So we will see. And I also kind of thought that he would participate with Emma doing some of the chemistry, guest hollow chemistry in the kitchen labs uh, for her chemistry this year. We're going to be doing those labs instead of the chemistry labs from BJU Press. <laughs> I can't just follow one thing, guys. I have to kind of make it my own. So I'm going to try and do these uh, food anatomy, nature anatomy, farm anatomy. I think we will start with the farm anatomy book and then um, and maybe the nature anatomy and just kind of see where we go. Uh, he helps me a lot with planting the garden and uh, getting things ready and um, making sure that we have the right amounts of, of different things for what we need to preserve for the winter. So we will definitely be kind of uh, flying by the seat of our pants for science this year, but I figured that that was okay. And that's kind of why I'm feeling like maybe this is just going to be not a full year of uh, high school for Jack. It's going to be more some early high school classes. He is going to be doing Algebra 1 through teaching textbooks. I actually have a video. I had a video on Monday um, going over the reasons that we still use teaching textbooks and love it. So he is going to be continuing that. He is going to be doing the Japanese 1. We're still a little up in the air on literature and that is where we will go next. So I did purchase the Level J Language Arts activity sheets, the extra activity sheets. Emma did this um, a couple of years ago for um, her language arts and I thought definitely 100 was going to be too much reading for him. However, when I went down and looked at the books for Level J, there were several that I know that he is definitely not going to want to read and uh, there were several that he had already read. So these are the books from Level J that he has not read or listened to or would be willing to read. Um, the Teacher's Funeral, The Westing Game, which I love, Treasure Island, which I think he's really going to enjoy, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Other Tales, The Gamage Cup and The Thief. These two are kind of questionable. I'm not entirely sure if he will be on board with reading those, but this is not, a full year of language arts for Jack. So he does also have Wordly Wise book eight, and there is a possibility of doing some Brave Writer boomerangs, uh, depending on what the book choices are. Those come out, I think, June 1st and June 2nd, or June 2nd and June 3rd. I can't remember the exact dates. Um, I will leave a link for that in the description box. We kind of combine sunlight and Brave Writer. This past year we didn't. Um, this past year was just kind of crazy. If you'd watched any of my homeschool updates or seen any of my homeschool videos in the past six months, you will know that it was just a really crazy year and we did not get to Brave Writer at all, um, unfortunately. So as I was organizing the Level 100 literature for just to make sure that I had all of the books because I've been going through all of my books in the basement trying to get things organized for next year, there were a lot of books in Level 100 that I thought that he would enjoy. So I think what I'm going to do is start out this summer with Jack reading some of these books as summer readers and then kind of seeing how things go uh, once we start normal curriculum in July and August I might have him start the level 100. Now I think that he could do level 100 reading just fine. I don't know about the amount of papers that they expect because level 100 is a huge jump from level H language arts which is what he did last year. Now, that is kind of the jump that most people make. They usually will go 
level G, level H, and then level 100. They do have level J, which we did because we needed an extra year of stuff because Emma was on the younger side for all of the other levels. But Jack is kind of in this in-between stage where I don't know if he is going to be all in for doing level 100 literature or if he really does need to stay with level J. Yes. So I will share some of the books that I was looking at for level 100 for him. Um, with you guys as well. First is Great American Short Stories. This is not part of Level 100, but this is either an arrow or a boomerang that I purchased a couple of years ago that I thought, I think I did, I think I did do it with Emma actually, but I thought that this would be good for him uh, because they are short stories and I think that he will enjoy that a little bit more. Uh, and give us something extra to do. So this is a treasury of poetry for young people. Sunlight always includes a poetry book and we don't necessarily follow the poetry selections, um, but we do read them. Um, I'm gonna go through the books that I know that he will not do first from level 100. You will see it is a lot of books. Uh, and I think that honestly, I feel like this plus history is more than enough for two credits uh, for literature and or English and history. So I'm not upset about removing some of the books, but again, I, I just don't know. So Peace Child, Stink Alley, although he might like this. Emma did enjoy this one. They Love to Laugh, I Know He Won't Like This, Bound for Oregon, Bonanza Girl, My Heart Lies South, again, this one definitely not, Out of the Dust, Keeping Score, Rules of the Road, and When You Reach Me. These are books that Emma read and was not like a huge fan of. Some of them she actually did quite enjoy, like this one she did like, but um, I don't think that Jack not reading them would be bad. So these are the books that I do have for him from level 100 that I would like him to read. Children of the Longhouse, Amos Fortune, Free Man, Indian Captive, The Story of Mary Jemison, Tom Sawyer, Elijah of Buxton, The Call of the Wild, To Kill a Mockingbird, Bud, Not Buddy, a Long Way From Chicago, A Year Down Yonder. This one is kind of up in the air. I'm not sure if he'll really like that or not, but I did want to put it in the pile. Maniac McGee, A Wrinkle in Time, The View from Saturday, Dear Mr. Henshaw, and then this Rip Van Winkle coloring book, um, which Emma read but did not color in. So um, it's, it's relatively short. So this plus those books that I just shared from level J, I think would make a really full year of English one for Jack, especially with the number of papers that are required in level 100, but I'm just not sure. And I don't want him to be so bogged down, especially trying to learn Japanese, that he's struggling. Uh, again, level 100, I think they expect almost like a paper a week, plus all of the discussion questions that you write out for history and for English. So we will see. <laughs> again, I just need to go through the content and really sit down with Jack and talk to him about it. I've had a lot of challenges choosing books for him the past couple of years because he has read most of the things that he is interested in reading in our home, whether they are part of future levels of homeschool or not. If he sees a book that he wants to read, he will read it. And that does kind of make things a little more challenging as I'm choosing books. So we will see, maybe because science will be just a little bit different um, and be something that he's more interested in and less uh, worksheet based, maybe that will be helpful. Um, and obviously I can cut a lot out of level 100. It is, it's a lot of writing and it's a lot of reading. Uh, I love it and I love literature-based learning, but level 100 is quite the jump. Um, these are the new books for the Bible portion of Sunlight Level 100. Uh, I think they removed three books and um, two of them we already had. Why Pray? 
uh, Philip Yancey, The Bible Jesus Read, What's So Amazing About Grace and Finding Truth. These two were part of Level J and we did read them, so I'm not going to reread them with Jack. These two I may do with him. Um, it just depends on what he would like to do. Again, I said this in my video yesterday, uh, my older kids do read the Bible every day and have their own devotionals and their own devotion time where they do Bible journaling and all kinds of different things. And so I don't have Bible as like a class in our homeschool. It's just something that we do uh, together. We read aloud together and we have a lot of great discussion. So this is uh, Jack's Bible. I don't even think I mentioned current events for Emma yesterday. <laughs> when I did my video for 10th grade choices, but we use World Watch, which is a subscription, but I absolutely love it. It is from a Christian worldview. I think it is very uh, interesting. All of my kids watch it and they enjoy watching it every day. Um, so we will continue to do current events with World Watch. Is that everything? <laughs> I think that that is everything. My kids do have passion projects that they work on individually. I don't necessarily plan those things. We use a lot of classes off of Skillshare uh, for creative type things for Emma with animation and drawing and such, and for Jack with Unreal Engine and Blender and that kind of stuff. So we will figure out more electives as the summer goes on, and I kind of treat that in six week chunks. Uh, based on a project that they want to work on, um, but I don't necessarily plan that out. So I think that I have everything. His math is teaching textbooks, Algebra 1. He is going to be doing Japanese 1 for his foreign language. The science is going to be the Julia Rothman collection and potentially the workbooks if I find that they will be good or I'm going to kind of create my own stuff, as well as him working on um, the chemistry in the kitchen labs with Emma. And then for history, he's doing level 100 US history. And for English, he's going to be doing level J slash level 100. And we will see which one sticks. It's, it's really going to depend when we start school, after I have a conversation with him and say, this is what I have planned. What do you think about it? Because I do take my kids' uh, <laughs> wants and desires into account when I am planning out the year. Um, and it will also depend on what Brave Writer comes out with for book choices. If Brave Writer comes out with some new boomerang slingshots that I'm really interested in doing with Jack, we will most likely skip level 100 English for the time being and just do level J language arts and then do Brave Writer. But if I am not super thrilled with the choices or, or Jack is really feeling confident about the level 100 work, then I will stay with level 100. So those are my choices for Jack, who would be in eighth grade if he were in public school, but it's kind of eighth slash ninth grade, um, depending on how you want to look at it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have questions about anything that I talked about, please let me know in the comments or you can email me. My contact form is always in the description box. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.